Hey everybody, this um, this is a video I'm, I'm really happy I get to make. This is a kind of a follow-up to a video I made a couple of years ago now. So let's back up, do a little history. So a couple of years ago, 2018, I think, um, there was the announcement of a film that got picked up um, for production. It was going to be called Rub and Tug, and it was about a, um, a trans man in the 1970s in Pittsburgh who basically ran a prostitution ring. It was an interesting, compelling story, and it was really cool that it was going to get a movie. Um, I wasn't too thrilled about it at the time because it was um, bought, and to be, the script was bought under the um, produ being produced by and starring Scarlett Johansson. In other words, a trans character was going to be played by a cisgender actor. And there was enough pushback on that that ultimately that did not happen. She dropped out of the project. Initially, the director, Rupert Sanders, stayed on, but they weren't able to secure a full green light without her attached. However, it, it did seem like the project was just dead at that point. But... New Regency uh, did retain the rights to it. They seemed to be sitting on it, and there was also fallout to the fallout on this. There were people who thought that Scarlett Johansson was railroaded out of the part. There are people who just flat out think that's wrong and who don't understand the issues of cisgender people playing transgender characters. I've done multiple videos on that over on Council of Geeks. I'll link down in the description to those if you yourself kind of need a primer on that. But in addition to that, there were people who, even if they weren't making the argument that um, anybody should be able to, uh, to play a transgender part, there were those who said, well, now the movie's just not going to get made at all. So I hope you're happy you bullied her out of this part. Now you don't get that story. Well, <laughs> yeah, we do. We just had to wait a little bit. So turns out the project, still with New Regency, has been reworked as a television series. It didn't look like they'd lined up a platform yet, so whether this will end up being streaming or on a network, or, that's not yet clear. But it's been reworked and has new talent attached. They haven't cast an actor yet, but they have made clear they are going to cast a trans male actor. They have producers and writing talent lined up. This is moving forward, primarily under the guidance of Our Lady J, who is somebody I am not particularly familiar with. Um, she's a pianist. Uh, I don't, and she and she has ties to the transgender and and drag communities. Like she's appeared on Drag Race, not as a queen. At least I don't think so. Um, but, you know, she uh, has also been a producer on shows like Transparent and Pose, neither of which I've watched. So I can't necessarily vouch for the quality of the things she's been involved in, but both of which I've heard relatively good things about. And I know certainly Transparent won a bunch of awards. I'm not going to watch that for reasons I don't feel like explaining right now, if you don't already know. But she certainly seems to have built up some clout to be able to feel like I can have confidence that she's going to help shepherd this. And in addition to that, Tex Gill, the real-life person that this entire story is meant to be portraying and, and relaying his experiences, his widow is going to be a consultant on the movie, as is the person who wrote the initial article that appeared a few years ago that got optioned into the script in the first place. So this thing is lining up basically everything that I would ask for in an adaptation like this. Now, granted, we don't have an actor listed yet, but as I said, they've said they want a trans male actor. Perfect. They have people involved who have some degree of experience, either writing or producing or otherwise being involved in the production of trans and LGBTQ plus related stories. Fantastic. They have 
direct involvement of the people who actually knew this individual, who are going to do better to honor who this individual was. That doesn't mean wipe, that doesn't mean completely wiping away all of the bad things they ever did and treating them as a paragon, but it means not falling into the cliches of what people who don't understand the trans experience presume it to be, which is what's behind a lot of the worst issues of representation of trans people in the industry. You have people who don't know the trans experience writing it anyway, and they're basing that writing off of the pop culture understanding, which is largely, at best, tainted and tilted in odd and unhelpful directions. It's avoiding all of those pitfalls so far as I can tell at this point. Now, does this guarantee that it's going to be great? No, nothing guarantees that anything is ever going to be great because it's always execution dependent. There's a million things that could go wrong between now and when this thing actually gets made. But it is avoiding the pitfalls and the early warning signs that would be red flags and alerts for me on a project like this. They're just not there. They're avoiding all of them. And that, to me, is really heartening. And especially to see something like this, which was a story that I did want to see told, just not with a cis actor in the role. I'm really happy to see that it didn't die the way detractors said it did. No, it got reworked the way these things do. It took some time because admittedly the initial heat on it was because Scarlett Johansson was involved. So when she pulled out, the heat was gone, but it's still a story worth telling. So it didn't die. It just took work to get the momentum back up again. That's normal. So it's not a case of we have to accept big name cisgender actors playing trans characters or else we don't get our stories told at all. That's not how it works. It's not how it should work, and it's not how it works in this instance. This is a good roadmap for correcting a problem because casting Scarlett Johansson was a problem, a problem that I'm still not 100% convinced she actually understands fully. I do believe that she's tried to come to an understanding as to why that wasn't okay. At the very least, she did understand that she needed to back out, but... Some of the interviews she's given since then, to me, read more like kind of petulant about it. Now, granted, I haven't seen if she's made any comments in the last calendar year or so, but I'm just, I am glad that she stepped away. I am. I, I would like to be more convinced that she does understand why she needed to do it. Because like a more recent example, um, just a tangent for a second, Halle Berry... Um, sort of offhandedly announced in like an interview that she was working on shepherding a story of a trans male character who she wanted to play. And a similar backlash and outcry happened. And what Halle Berry did was to come out on Twitter and say, it's now been explained to me why someone like me shouldn't play this part. I'm sorry that I didn't understand that before. I understand it now. I'm not going to do that. That is what the reaction should be. Because the truth be told, as much as I would like it, I can't necessarily expect all the people involved in these films, whether it be writers, directors, stars, whatever, to understand why it's not okay. Because if they haven't had reason to get educated about that or haven't sought it out themselves, then they can just look at just the history of awards and go, oh, well, this works out really great. Look at all the awards and nominations for people like Eddie Redmayne and Jared Leto. And oh, yeah, this is a great thing for me to do. Well, it's not. So I can't expect everybody involved in the film industry in America, to already know that that's not okay. But I think what I can expect, reasonably, is that when they try and do that, it gets brought to their attention, it becomes a teaching moment, and they go, oh, okay, my bad, I'm sorry, I won't do that. Which is what Halle Berry did, and what Scarlett Johansson kind of stumbled at. But I, I, I tangented there, 
the big point is, this thing's coming back. I'm really happy for that. I'm happy because I wanted to see the story. I'm happy because it means that these stories aren't just being made because they are ego and vanity projects for a big star, but because it's a story worth telling and people believed in it enough to keep pushing it, even in the absence of a star. This, everything about this, is a good direction for things to be going. And it's made me quite, quite happy. So that's it for this one, folks. What do you think about this? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something on down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Usual stuff, you know what it is. Like, subscribe. I have a Patreon. Um, I am no longer employed, so that's I, kind of more important than it used to be. But you know what? I'm not trying to put too much pressure onto you about that or about any of it. Because end of the day, this is a relaxed place. We're laid back here. So just come on back next time we need a break. <laughs>